We are still awaiting the expected exchange of a third group of hostages for another group of Palestinian prisoners. Joining me now to talk about this on set is Democratic Congressman Gregory Meeks from the Borough of Queens here in New York. He is the ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee and the dean of CBC House members, as far as I'm concerned. He recently returned from a trip to Israel with a congressional delegation. Congressman Meeks, always good to see you. How you doing? Good to be with you, Brother Coleman. Um, let's start. There, this is day three of this four-day pause in fighting between Israel and Hamas. And, and we are now hearing that an American might be among one of the hostages exchanged. For our audience who may not necessarily understand or know, why did it take three days to get to this point of an American being released among the hostages? Well, you know, President Biden has been working very hard. He has been one that uh, has helped with, the, with, the, with Qatar, with Israel, uh, deal with Hamas. Uh, and Hamas is Hamas. So they also are playing the games. They give the list of who they're going to turn over. Uh, then the Israelis give who they're going to turn over. And I think that they're looking at, you know, when you look at how Hamas operates, the value of an American uh, citizen being released who's been uh, held as a hostage as opposed to someone else and, and moving back and forth. And when you hold back, because this, you know, is uh, the second phase, and we know that there could be another day in a uh, truce uh, in regards to a releasing of other individuals. And so, you know, I don't really trust Hamas, but I think that's part of the game that they are playing uh, and what they're looking at and how they're moving forward. But uh, I give kudos to President Biden uh, and all of the work that he has been doing uh, to help uh, the hostages to be released uh, and, and moving forward with those negotiations. So I want to lean into the notion of President Biden and his work uh, but I want to talk in terms of looking forward and what that actually looks like. So we are now having this four-day pause, and there are a lot of people who are asking, why is it not possible that this four-day pause could not be the beginning of the end of this conflict, at least temporarily? Where are we in terms of the Foreign Affairs Committee, in terms of, you know, what you know of the White House, in terms of trying to push that in terms of extending this? Charles, you know what? This could almost be over if Hamas would just surrender. You know, we forget who Hamas is and what Hamas has done uh, and how Hamas uh, has uh, utilized and continue to utilize the Palestinian people as shields. I think that there's got to be more pressure put on Hamas. Hamas still contends that Israel does not have the right to exist. Hamas still says that they will do a, uh, an attack Israel again. Uh, so if the, Hamas does not want peace in the region, we should be able to, to uh, galvanize individuals to have peace in the region. So what I hope happens, and I know there's been some conversation that, uh, that has taken place, is that uh, Israel continues to talk to Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan, UAE, the, the Qatar, uh, uh, and talk about how, in fact, they all can come together. You know, just as we talk about uh, you know, United States can't do it alone. You have to have allies in this world. So Israel needs to now continue to push, as they were doing with the Abraham Accords, to have allies and to start talking about how we can transform the region. But that can't happen with Hamas, who but, does but, not want to transform. But, but, but I've, got, I've got to push back, because you, you've talked about Hamas, and those things are legitimate gripes and, and, and issues with respect to this process moving forward. But even now, we saw from Sky News yesterday, and we've gotten other reports regarding continued fighting in Gaza when we're supposed to be on this four-day truce. And so there's some conversation, at least to be had, around what... Israelis are or are not doing? What is the IDF not doing that can hopefully extend this four-day pause as well? Because it takes two. Well, it does take two. And what takes is the uh, is Hamas to release. They're the one that's holding the hostages. So they're kind of the ones that's calling some of the shots right now. And there's no pressure put on them. They're the ones that initiated. They broke the pause. They broke the ceasefire on October the 7th. Why do you think so there's no pressure being put on them? Well, you know, look, what we see is because folks, and I'm one of them also, see innocent Palestinians that are dying, that are dying. And I want that to stop. And I think the world wants to stop. It's hard to see uh, innocent Palestinians dying, just as it was hard for me to see innocent Israelis dying, you know, at the hands of Hamas. 
And so you want to see some kind of peace because we are human and we don't want to see the evil side. And Hamas, what they've done and how they did it was an evil act. And so now I think that because we were pushing all along, you know, with the Abraham Accords and others to really transform the Middle East. For the first time, you were having uh, other Arab nations uh, and Gulf states saying Israel had the right to exist. And that changes things in the region. You know, if you look at, you know, previously, the war between Israel was Israel and Egypt or Israel and Jordan. But when Jordan said that Israel had the right to, 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 to exist, those fights stopped. When Egypt said Israel has the right to exist, those stops fight. Those, those, that fight stopped. So now we need to push, and that's the direction we were moving on. And I believe that's why Hamas did what it did, because it does not want peace. I have to sneak in one last question, because what a lot of people, myself is included, are concerned about is what happens the day after. Once this is finally resolved, right, are we going as a country, is the U.S. going to support an end occupation for Palestinian sovereignty? Because the question, people in, 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 who have been removed from Gaza, they want to go home. And it's going to be very difficult to do that. So are we going to support Palestinian sovereignty and, and the end to this occupation? Yes, but Hamas has, that's, why, that's one reason why Hamas has got to be gone. Hamas cannot be a part of that because we know that they don't believe Israel has the right to exist. That's another reason why we need to work with uh, the, our allies in the region because Israel cannot occupy, uh, in my estimation, that the Palestinian state. But the Palestinians also have to have a leader to grow up from among them, because uh, Abbas is not one that is well recognized by the Palestinian people. He's not trusted by the Palestinians, just as Hamas isn't. There was a poll that was done that ended on October the 6th, where over 65 percent of the people thought Hamas was corrupt, and they did not follow them. So we also need to have, and it can't be the United States by itself. It can't be Israel. That's why these other allies in the Gulf countries become really important so that they can then help the Palestinians and others so that they can grow and develop and be able to live uh, in a Palestinian state. That's why I'm a firm believer in a two-state solution. Always a pleasure talking to you. Love the suit. Love yours. Great, great Sunday conversation <laughs> Queens with together, my friend. Brother. Queens together all day. That was Congressman Gregory Meeks joining us here on Velshi on MSNBC. So